Let's look at a real-life example of chemical buffering, your blood. As mentioned in an earlier checkpoint, your blood pH needs to be highly specific. Wikipedia says it needs to be from 7.35 to 7.45. Other textbooks might tell you something along the lines of plus minus 0.5, but even then, it's not a very big space to play with. As in the previous checkpoint, you saw how the lack of buffers can lead to disastrous changes in pH by the introduction of just small amounts of acid. But thankfully, your blood has its own natural buffering mechanism. The buffer is made up of multiple buffers actually. The two most common buffers are the bicarbonate buffer and the phosphate buffer which works in the following ways. The bicarbonate buffer will react with excess acid to form carbonic acid, while carbonic acid will react with excess of base to form bicarbonate. Same for phosphate, HPO4-2- reacts with acid, excess acid to form H2PO4-. And H2PO4- reacts with excess base to form HPO4-2-. The decrease, a decrease in blood pH, which can be caused by the rapid production of carbon dioxide in certain parts of the body, causes acidosis or decreased blood pH and can be fatal. The reverse condition is called alkalosis. Not surprisingly, there is hence a need to buffer our blood against pH changes, especially given that humans are extremely unpredictable creatures from studying chemistry at one moment to doing push-ups on the floor the next moment. In order to buffer such possible rapid changes in blood, we have these buffers inside to mop up pH changes. If excess acid is present, the conjugate base reacts with it to form the undissociated acid. If, the undisso if excess base is present, then the undissociated acid reacts with it to remove it from the solution. And that's pretty much it for buffers in the blood.